arrived in New York City. The holiday season is all around Madison Square Garden. SantaCon has thousands of Kris Kringles all around the streets in New York City. Also in town, the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky with its youth and talent, all part of the City Hoops Classic. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's the Kentucky Wildcats taking on the Monmouth Hawks out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. And welcome everybody inside the garden. Doug Sherman along with LaFonso Ellis. So glad you could join us here today for a chance to see a Kentucky roster that once again is completely turned over this year. Yeah, the youngest team that Coach Calipari has had. But the thing I love about this team is their 10-man rotation. Five guys, 6'9 or better. This is a long and athletic Kentucky Wildcat team. And let's give you a taste of what they do. Kevin Knox is the leader of that freshman class, and he really has been bringing it this year. He's been absolutely Absolutely sensational, especially over the last two games. 23 points per game, has a unique skill set at 6'9". I think he can become the closer for the Wildcats. But he's not the only freshman. Coach Cal has freshmen all around the roster who are really bringing it this year. I mean, when you think about all of their offensive production on the season is coming from their freshmen, that's absolutely unbelievable the contribution that he's getting from these guys. I think Winion Gabriel is going to be key because of his experience coming back from last season. Yeah, he's one of two sophomores in the playing group. Coach John Calipari in his ninth year at Kentucky, 58-year-old native of Moon Township, Pennsylvania. That's outside of Pittsburgh. But he loves coming to New York City and playing here at the Garden. Absolutely. What a special place, Madison Square Garden. Not a better place in the entire world to play a basketball game. And when we asked Coach Cal yesterday about his favorite memories, he didn't hesitate with a number of them, including back in his days at UMass, beating North Carolina and being ashamed to look Dean Smith in the eye in the handshake lineup after the game. I mean, how could you look at the great Dean <laughs> after you've actually beaten them here in New York? I think that was a good move. I would have done the same. Monmouth is led by Mike Seaborn. He's a redshirt junior from Fort Worth, Texas, out of Prime Prep Academy, averaging nearly 17 points per game and coming off a 23-point performance last time out against Hofstra. And we are underway. Kentucky in the white, Monmouth in the gray for the 2017 City Hoops Classic. Quade Green lobs to the rim. Hami Diallo comes down and then lays it in. What presence and awareness by Diallo. Most kids would have actually tried to take that shot if he's underneath the backboard. Recognized it, came down, went up strong with the finish. Good start for the Wildcats. Well, if you are familiar with the Monmouth Hawks the last couple of years, you know that they have won two regular season championships in their conference. Couple of rim rejections by the Wildcats. Knox has the pass go in and out of his hands. But Monmouth is a program that uh, has won a total of 55 games over the last two years. But King Rice has had to completely rework his roster. Yeah, lost a six-player senior class, which represented 62% of that offense. Micah Seaborn has needed to step up and become the go-to guy for them, and he certainly has. Been killing it over the last two games. 25 points a game. Not only that, 8 of 14 from three. Going to need a huge effort from him this afternoon to beat the Wildcats. The new point guard for Monmouth is Austin Tillman. He's got the basketball now. Ten seconds on the shot clock. One minute in. It's a tough shot there. You want that to go inside out. No dribble penetration, no post. Got to do a better job of reversing the ball. Here goes P.J. Washington back out to Knox. There's freshman to freshman. Knox left it short. He's probably the best three-point shooter on this Kentucky team right now. Well, he has a beautiful jump shot at 6'9". Great high release in the finish. Strong drive by Ray Selnave, not able to finish. Diallo back the other way with a little high step. Nick Richards, and another opportunity. It's Washington with his first two. And partner, there's going to be two big keys to this game. Cannot turn the basketball over if you're Monmouth, and you cannot allow this Kentucky team with their length and athleticism to dominate the offensive glass. It's been a trouble spot for this Monmouth Hawks team all throughout the season. 
four games, they've given up 20 or more turnovers, and they've been out-rebounded heavily on the glass, especially against Seton Hall, who they gave up 19 offensive rebounds to. Well, this Kentucky team is the fourth longest in the country behind Syracuse, San Jose State, Duke, and then the Wildcats, and that's what Monmouth has to deal with on the glass and against that defense. Knox tries to give it back. Instead, he turns it over to Seaborn. Quickly up ahead, Salnave to the reverse. And because of how long and athletic, we've already seen it on display from Kentucky, their ability to use that length to block shots, pace, Whenever Monmouth can get them to miss a shot or turn it over, Monmouth's got to get some easy baskets in transition. I love that last possession. Well, Fonz, we're not quite a month into the season as Green fires away. Another offensive rebound for Kentucky, but it's taken away by Selnave. We're not quite a month into the season as Seaborn fires away and hits. What do you think of Kentucky from where they were the first week of November to where they are now the first week of December? I think they've settled down, and I think a lot of that has been because of Kevin Knox playing so well on the offensive end. He's so under control, and jallo has been playing much better, not just relying on the jump shot as Quadi Green knocks down one there. He's been pretty good from the three-point line himself. Yeah. But early on, Giallo was depending on his jump shot way too much. Three games in a row where he didn't even touch double figures, but once he decided to put his head down and get to the rim, two games in a row, 19 in each. 7-5 Kentucky. Ball poked away by Washington, and it's Kentucky basketball. And folks, today, Monmouth's going to have to take advantage of every opportunity they can get on turnovers, get out in transition and score. Beautifully done there in transition. And here's another transition basket here. Seaborn stepping into a big three. I love what they're doing in transition right now. That's going to be a recurring theme throughout this game. Three fresh Wildcats off the bench. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Wenyan Gabriel, and Ty Winyard. Green gets loose in the lane. He's got five. Foul on the post pass into Zach Tillman. It'll go against Ty Winyard, his first. Zach Tillman has really stepped up his game over the last three games. 13 points a game over the last three for a guy who's averaging six. He's really coming into his own, and he's going to have to be good down in the post today. Seaborn. I don't like that shot before. Well, we talked to King Rice before the ball game about that very thing. There's Seaborn's second steal, and then he is fouled. Fourth turnover already committed by Kentucky. But, you know, this Monmouth team has had so much success the last couple of years, although without getting to the NCAA tournament. But they lost the best senior class in program history, and so there's nobody on this Monmouth roster still playing the same role this year that they did last year. Yeah, and because of the success of Justin Robinson, he did a great job scoring the basketball, but he also got a lot of people involved. And so sometimes with the spotlight, you can start to try to do too much, and that's certainly been the case for this Monmouth team in this early season. Tillman gets double teamed back out to the freshman Dion Hammond. Pull up from the baseline, and he's got his first two. Much more patience. I love when they're getting jump shots on inside out. Inside could be by the dribble or throwing it inside to your bigs. And if they can continue to get opportunities like that, it's a good deal for Monmouth. Winyard fouled by Hammond, and we've got our first break here today at the Garden. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by City. Welcome What's Next. And Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports.
Coach Calipari and his Kentucky Wildcats with the early two-point lead here at Madison Square Garden. We now welcome in the third member of our team this afternoon, Jill Montgomery. Doug, thank you so much. When you talk about the inexperience of this Kentucky team, it's at a whole new level. Yesterday at practice, Coach Calipari had his entire team stop and do a step back defensive drill that literally looked like a scene out of Hoosiers. But this week, they've had a lot more time to practice on things like breaking down the offense, driving the zones, and more importantly, thinking basketball together. And that bond that brings them into the bind into themselves, forward PJ Washington told me, we go to the mall together, we play video games together. Madden, he since existed that he was the best at Madden, but a couple of his teammates had a few words to say about that. I'd imagine they would, Jill, and uh, Kentucky, like most of Division I basketball, had an extremely busy November, and things have slowed down in December, so this young team has more opportunity to get on the practice floor. Yeah, on the practice floor, but as Jill pointed out, they love playing video games together. Jill doesn't quite understand the male mentality. <laughs> Yesterday, she got, almost had World War III get started amongst three of the players out there, having them determine who was the best Madden player. Gotta cut that out over there, Jill. Seaborn with the extra pass, and the foul called on Quade Green. That'll send Mustafa Treor, redshirt sophomore from Philadelphia, to the free throw line. Personal on green. I like what Monmouth is doing right now, sir. They are doing a great job now of not just settling for the jump shot, but they're looking to throw that thing inside out. They've been able to get a little bit of dribble penetration. Started this game 0 of 5. Since they settled down, 3 of 4 over the last four field goals. So you know what it's like to come into Madison Square Garden, whether you're playing for Notre Dame like you did or for Kentucky or for Monmouth. This place is different and it's special, and I would think that for all the players, it takes a minute or two to catch your breath. Yeah, it does. And, of course, you, you're playing at one of the most unique venues in the entire world. But one of the things I've always loved about it is just how dark it is in the fan area, but it's well lit here on the court. And from a depth perception standpoint, I think it's the perfect shooting environment. I always love dark gyms. Absolutely. So we've got a terrific crowd here. Uh, obviously, wherever Kentucky goes in the country, they draw a crowd. And Monmouth is only about an hour south of here on the Jersey Shore. And so they've got a couple thousand fans who have made the trip up. Shea Gilgis Alexander is on the board. What a great job by Kevin Knox receiving the double team and knowing where the open player was on the weak side of the floor. That's there. Beautifully executed by the Wildcats. Just over five minutes in, Zach Tillman double team. Seaborn's always going to draw a crowd, has it poked away. Knox with the basketball. He's got Green ahead of him. And give Knox the steal and the assist. So that's the bit of that chemistry that Jill was referring to earlier. Knox could have just taken that in to dunk and probably would have ha would have earlier in the year. But the bond and the chemistry that they're creating off the floor leads to on the floor chemistry. He throws that basketball ahead to Quaddy Green the way that he should. And be honest, he really wanted to dunk that ball. I wanted to dunk that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Knox clears the Tillman miss. So did I, but I never had that option like you did. <laughs> Knox off the little head fake, gets himself into the paint and draws the foul. Looked like kind of an awkward landing there as well, but he appears to be all right. Now head to the free throw line. A little shot fake there. Now you're seeing a little bit of his skill set on display at 6'9", 215 pounds to be able to move and handle the basketball the way that he does. And there's these beautiful floaters in the lane as well. Kevin Knox is going to be a monster for the Wildcats this season. Now one of the themes for Coach Cal when it comes to Kevin Knox this year has played through contact. He wants to make sure that this young man in his development plays through contact. We saw that there. Finish the shot. Get yourself to the line. Yeah, absolutely. And for someone who's 6'9", Coach Calipari wants him to play more like a guard. We were watching practice yesterday, and instead of being down there working with the bigs on post moves, he's actually working with the guards because of his unique skill set, his ability to shoot the basketball and put it on the floor. And, you know, Calipari's talked a lot this year about positionless basketball, but uh, the reality is he says there's nobody else on the roster right now with the healthy players they have who can play the, pl uh, the role that Kevin Knox does. So consequently, Knox is playing over 35 minutes a game. Coach says that's got to come down over the years. Ow! The missed dunk by Diallo. Folks, I don't get too excited about much, but block shots and dunks I absolutely love. Folks, this is 44 and a half inch vertical on display there, and he tried to destroy the rim. Oh, 
my gosh. What did the rim ever do to him? I know. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was upset that the rim didn't take him out to dinner last night Man. or something. Well, Diallo, 6'5", redshirt freshman from right here in New York City. He is uh, from Queens. Played his high school ball at Putnam Science Academy in Northeast Connecticut. Never before has played here at the Garden Series. A New York kid getting his first opportunity. What a great feeling that must be to play in front of your home crowd in the mecca of basketball. And he's thinking, only if my first bucket was that dunk. I know, right? Well, it's a 7 nothing Kentucky run to open up this double-figure lead. A little slippage by Selnave. Another turnover. Diallo's got his first running bucket. The run continues. Nine straight points for the Wildcats. Wildcats have gone to a little full-court pressure here. And that's really been an Achilles heel for this Monmouth team, folks. Early in the year, young season, only nine games. They've had four games where they've turned the basketball over 20 or more times, and they can ill afford to turn that basketball over against this long, athletic Wildcat team. Pass deflected. Now only two seconds to shoot. Sal Nave. Left it short, and we've got a foul on the rebound. Holiday Hoops are back, and we'll have a great matchup next Sunday afternoon on ESPN. Roy Williams and the 11th ranked Tar Heels will be in Knoxville to take on Rick Barnes' number 24 Tennessee Volunteers. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. And uh, is there any bigger surprise right now in the SEC, Fonz, than the Tennessee Volunteers? Uh, very scrappy. No, there's not. A very scrappy team who can really guard the basketball. They can play small, which creates a lot of problems for guys, and they've gotten off to a tremendous start. Another foul called inside, and that's two quick ones on Nick Richards. And so the freshman from Kingston, Jamaica, We'll head back to the bench. And that's one of the areas that he's really struggled with to a degree. He only, he's very new to the game. He's only been playing this game for about 14 years. To, uh, I'm sorry, since he was 14 years of age. 7'4 wingspan, and he's really kind of learning how to position himself without fouling because he's going to be a key cog because of his ability to protect the rim. Diallo clears the miss. Gilgis Alexander. And again, Kentucky is making Monmouth pay on the offensive glass. Yeah, we saw that earlier in the year against Seton Hall, who had 19 offensive rebounds. And again, two keys to this game, turnovers, offensive rebound opportunities. And Kentucky has been really dominant on the offensive yeah. glass here early. Well, King Rice said that his guys can't take a step back. you got to take a step forward and be aggressive against this type of team. Washington rattles home the free throw. There's the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame coach, first ballot Hall of Famer back in 2015. John Calipari, who actually preceded his team in the trip from Kentucky here to New York City. He came up a day before on a recruiting visit that actually wound up not working out because of travel delays. So he had an extra day in the city, but he is indefatigable. He didn't let the time go to waste. <laughs> he certainly didn't. Pretty energetic yesterday in practice. It is something to watch a coach of his ilk run an entire two and a half hour practice. The assistants are there and they are assisting him, but he is in charge, period. The attention to detail, particularly with the fundamentals, vital for this young team and they were dialed in. Says a lot about the focus and determination of this Wildcat team. Diallo whistled for the foul. King Rice continues to go deeper into his bench, and he's still struggling to find a, a routine and a rhythm with his rotation. You know, they've had nine games prior to today, used eight different lineup spawns, ten different starters, and that doesn't include their fifth-year senior, Zach Tillman, who has started 67 games previously in his career. Yeah, they, they like to play fast, and so oftentimes when you like to play fast, and especially on the defensive end, guys can get fatigued, and so the fact that you can play 11 to 12 guys is really important and I think it keeps the guys on the bench dialed in in practices because if you know you're going to get in <laughs> it kind of is an extra incentive for you to practice and stay engaged 
Louis Pilari off the bench with his first two points from the line. That snaps the 11-0 Kentucky run. Meanwhile, the Wildcats are the ones who are racking up the fouls, Fonz. Diallo misses on the turnaround, and we've got a foul on the rebound. Kentucky has picked up seven fouls already in uh, just over seven minutes. Yeah, reaching a little. Again, that's their youth, reaching a little bit, not in proper position defensively. It's certainly an area that they can improve in as well. That's the 15th foul against Monmouth, first against Mustafa Treor. 2-3 zone here from Monmouth. What a pass. Winyard, the recipient of the terrific look from Gilgis Alexander. Seaborn, first team all conference in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, but he doesn't have to face that kind of defense in the match. Three on two, Gilgis Alexander drops for Diallo and a foul on the rebound. Folks, the ball movement for Kentucky against this 2 3 zone has been terrific. You want to reverse that ball, get it at the top, and now Gilgis Alexander, so tall, can see over the top. What a finish on the inside there. Ty Winyard getting it done. Back inside the world's most famous arena, Kentucky has opened up a 14-point lead in LaFonso Ellis. You know, we expected the dominance inside already. Kentucky has more offensive rebounds than Monmouth has total rebounds. Yes, no question about it. you got to be able to find bodies when you're playing against Kentucky and make them jump over the top of you. Monmouth has not done that with any consistency. And then on the offensive end, when the guards of Monmouth are getting into the gap, which they're doing a great job of, they got to think pat, draw and kick. They're thinking trying to score, and Kentucky's length has been erasing everything at the rim. And the Wildcats have already blocked three Monmouth shots. The Hawks are only three of 14. They've yet to get their star player, Micah Seaborn, going. He's got just three points. Hami Diallo at the free throw line. Monmouth has gone a little over four minutes since its last field goal against that long Kentucky defense. And another foul called against the Wildcats. That's on Winyard. And that's his second personal. Diego Quinn doing a nice job. We just talked about that of boxing out and forcing them to jump over the top. They've got to continue to do that. They should be in the bonus here pretty soon. Oh, yeah, they are in the bonus. 
Well, Diego Quinn is one of the few Monmouth Hawks who can look the Kentucky front line in the eye. Diego is 6'10", 255. He's from New York City. This is his first opportunity playing here at Madison Square Garden. And he is somebody who has played very much a secondary role prior to this year, but he yeah. has stepped into a more primary role and done quite well. Yeah, another guy that didn't start playing this game until he was a teenager, team leader in blocks, and they're going to need him to be really good down in the low post on the offensive glass, not only today, but to get back to the championship caliber as this team is known for being the last couple of years. He's a vital cog in that process. Fifth turnover committed by Kentucky. And Diego Quinn played high school basketball about 100 blocks north of here. Up on 135th Street, he played wow. at uh, A. Randolph High School. Nice. On 135th up in Harlem before transferring out to Illinois to Lake Forest Academy. But he is a New Yorker through and through and would love to have a good show here at the Garden this afternoon. A little 2-3 zone. You always want to try to get that basketball to the foul line area or in the short corners either by the pass or by the dribble. Yeah, Kentucky's playing about 11% of its defensive possessions this year in a zone, and that's by far the most in the Calipari era. There it is. Zach Tillman had it, but then he shuffled his feet before he put the ball on the floor. Yeah, when you catch it, your eyes have to go first to the rim and then opposite. He's a little impatient there, and that's what caused that travel. You know what? I'd be a little nervous, too, mm -hmm. if I caught the ball amongst all that length that Kentucky has out there. No doubt about it. Gabriel Washington, Diallo, Knox, and Green, the five on the floor. This is Kevin Knox off the nice fake. Misses the two-point shot. Zach Tillman clears. Here come the Hawks trying to push the tempo. Treor denied by Gabriel. But we've got a foul call. Say they got him in the head. Personal on Gabriel, his first. And that's the ninth against Kentucky. So another trip back to the free throw line for the Hawks. Mr. Chairman, we've seen it so far in this first half when Monmouth has forced either turnovers or gotten a defensive rebound. They've been able to get out and get some opportunities at the rim. For them to get back in this game, they're going to have to continue to get stops on the defensive end and get out in transition before that length can become a factor in the half court. Sal Nave, another native New Yorker. He's actually played in the building. 2015 City League Championship. And so he should have a feel for these rims and the background a little bit. Gabriel from the corner hits the two. Boy, they need Winyan Gabriel's leadership. We said this is the youngest team John Calipari has had. And if he can play well for them, his experience now all of a sudden you get that one guy on the team who has some valuable experience because as they get to the end of the year, nice lob over the top. That Wind experience just couldn't is huge. Yeah. Diallo. Boy, Kentucky gets the ball from end to end so quickly. Mm. Well, traditionally, college basketball coaches like Calipari would have a four-year plan. You bring a kid in from high school, <laughs> you're looking to have them get better from their freshman year to their sophomore year, sophomore to junior, junior to senior. But now he's really on a four-month plan rather than a four-year plan that he's got to see improvement from November to December, December to January, January to February, and hopefully beyond. And his teams have always been really good come February and March. Tonight at midnight on ESPN after the boxing title fight, Bucci and Anderson host SportsCenter. They'll have Teddy Atlas's ringside reactions after what could be one of the fights of the year. Plus, Mel Kuyper Jr. and Todd McShay on the risks of drafting Baker Mayfield. And LeBron and the Cavs look to bounce back against the 76ers, trying to get another winning streak going. That's all coming up tonight on SportsCenter. Do you, do you think Baker Mayfield's height would be an issue in the pros, only being six foot, six one? No. I don't think so. I mean, look at Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. You know, there are other guys at that size who have gone to the NFL and succeeded. Drew Brees is short too, isn't he? He is. He is. Hey, look who's uh, sitting courtside. That is the new manager of the New York Yankees, Sharon Boone, with his new boss, Brian Cashman, the general manager, who just made huge news. It's been reported in the last hour that they have reached agreement to acquire Giancarlo Stanton from the Marlins and his 59 home runs. Wow. And so Aaron Boone is going to join us here at the table out of the next commercial break, and we'll get the very latest 
from the Yankees on their latest big ticket acquisition. The rich keep getting richer, huh, there, friend? They do. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton decided with his no trade clause. He didn't want to go to St. Louis, didn't want to go to San Francisco, so the uh, Yankees stepped in and stepped up. Being a St. Louis Cardinals guy, I'm offended he didn't want to go to St. Louis. <laughs> One of the greatest franchise of all time. This is Quade Green. And another turnover unforced by Kentucky because Knox was standing on the sideline when he took that pass. Monmouth calls timeout. We'll take a break as well. All Kentucky here at the Garden so far. It's the City Hoops Classic at Madison Square Garden. Coach Calipari's Kentucky Wildcats have really been getting it done at the defensive end so far, leading 30 to 12. And the Hawks have gone stone cold in large part because of the defense they're having to face. Yeah, absolutely. The length has really bothered them on the perimeter and especially near the rim. The last field goal Monmouth had was at the 1548 mark. And since then, they've missed their last five shots. And it's because of the length the superior link that Kentucky has on the defensive end of the floor. Now the soon to be 49 year old Binghamton native head coach King Rice knows he's got a new roster he's got to work mm -hmm. just like John Calipari. King is the two time reigning Mac coach of the year and again uh, lost Justin Robinson the greatest player in program history who had a tremendous summer league with the Miami Heat and is now playing professionally over in Russia. And so those are huge shoes to fill. Two time Mac player of the year. Over 2,000 points. Of Seaborn knocks down in inside out three. Justin Robinson was a man, that was a tough little dude. Sure was. That's a guy who was born breach and in being born suffered a broken foot. Mm -hmm. And he had to overcome that. Kentucky gets those points right back. 33 15 Wildcats. Pierre Saar has come into the game off the Monmouth bench. He sets the screen. Here's Seaborn with the runner off the window. He's got eight to lead the Hawks. It's a great example of ball reversal and attacking the middle part of the floor and that kick out was how Micah Seaborn was able to give a little ball fake and get to the baseline side. Beautifully executed there by Monmouth. He'll just Alexander no. Seaborn starting to feel it. Mm -hmm. He's into double figures. Timeout, Kentucky. Micah Seaborn's got 11. And the Hawks trying to hang around with Kentucky. When we come back, the new manager of the Yankees, Aaron Boone, joins us to talk about his newest slugging outfielder, Giancarlo Stanton, soon to be in pinstripes.
Back in Madison Square Garden, Kentucky with the 13-point lead over Monmouth, and we are pleased to be joined now by the new manager of the New York Yankees, Aaron Boone. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to be with you guys. A lot of fun being out here at the Garden watching some good hoops. You miss having the headset on, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it at least felt natural to put it back on, so that's good. Well, the, the big news, ESPN is reporting that uh, your Yankees and the Marlins have come to an agreement for you to get Giancarlo Stanton. Can you add any more to that? Uh, I got nothing for you, nothing official. I'm trying to work over... Over, over Cashman over there, and no, nothing official on that front. We'll, we'll see what happens. Is Brian watching the game at all, or is he <laughs> staring at his phone the whole time? You know what? He's pretty good at multitasking, so <laughs> he, he loves his Kentucky Wildcats, so he, he's, he's got a handle on, on everything. What's it feel like for you to come back and, and put the pinstripes back on years after having, you know, an iconic moment in yeah. franchise history? I, I'm, I'm so excited, obviously, to get a chance to be a part of what we've got going on right now. It's an exciting time in Yankee history with all the young players that we have that have so much fun uh, playing the game. Uh, it's an opportunity, hopefully, to do some great things. Aaron, CeCe Sabathia, what, what do you think? Will he be back next year or not? Where, where, where does he stand right now? Well, we're, we're obviously going to be talking to CC. He's coming off an outstanding year. He was so important not only in the clubhouse, but with his performance on the field last year. So uh, we would love to get him back in the mix. I had an opportunity to be a teammate of CC for two, three years. So I've known him forever. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's such a great teammate. And uh, you know, I know we'll be talking to him over the next couple of weeks. So we'll see, we'll see where it leads. Hang on just a second, Aaron. Your boss apparently is with our Jill. She's got a question for him, if you can hang on. Jill? I'm lucky enough to be sitting courtside with Brian Cashman. There's a lot of news breaking this morning for your Yankees. What's the most exciting thing that you're looking forward to? Watching Kentucky pummel Mammoth. I'm a big <laughs> Kentucky fan. Grew up in Lexington, and Coach Cal's a fun guy to watch coach. No Yankee news, but he loves his Wildcats. Sounds like that's the company line. <laughs> <laughs> He's not on the phone right now, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. You know, I was wondering about this. Uh, now, you are the face or one of the faces of one of the iconic brands in, in sports entertainment in this country. We're in the presence of John Calipari, who is similarly in a position at Kentucky. Can you look at him and learn anything from how he handles what he has to handle every day? I, I better be. And yeah. I, I've already been, he's one of the guys I've been watching today. I, I You know, I'm, I'm an observer and I love to watch guys, especially guys that have been so successful and just kind of see how they handle things, how they move around, how they seem to control situations and and certainly with uh, John Calipari over there, he's a guy I'll, I'll keep an eye on today. How about Aaron Judge with shoulder surgery? Do you think he'll be ready for spring training? Oh, yeah. He's he's doing great. He's into his off-season training mode already. Um, it was a kind of a cleanup situation, so um, really feel comfortable that he's going to come into camp uh, and, and be able to hit the ground running. Maybe is that a – we, in college basketball, NBA, we're having this trend where – if you're getting these tall twos and threes, Kevin Knox, 6'9", 215. Aaron Judge is kind of a freak of nature, too. Is that kind of a new trend, bigger hitters? It, it, it could be. I mean, if we, we get more Aaron Judges, absolutely, man. <laughs> what he was able to do, and, and look, he's he's a freak. To be able to 6'7", six, 6'8", six, to be able to string together the, the quality of season, it's one thing to obviously have the power, but then to be able to go into the games that tall and be able to produce like he did it's really impressive and now hopefully we can get him to to uh, be that kind of consistent slugger year in and year out we're really excited what he brings and just as important what he brings to the room he's such a great person and we feel like going to be one of our leaders for a long time to come what are you most excited about in your new role what do you most look forward to well you know right now it's just busy time you know putting a staff together you know all the things that go into leading up to spring training you know getting our spring training plan in, in place um, again putting that staff together and just getting through the off season and all that goes into planning for spring training as, as we get ready to hopefully start a championship caliber season over the last 14 years you've made many many trips to new york city mm -hmm. i'm guessing every time you're here you're yelled at constantly about the home run in the last few days now are the shouts something different <laughs> Um, you know what? So far, it's been great. It, it, it's been a lot of well-wishing, and, and I feel like open arms, which, which I've always felt, frankly, when I come back to New York, but a lot of people, I feel like, 
uh, happy about the situation, cheering for me. And, you know, I understand this is the honeymoon phase of it all, but uh, the work starts now. And, and look, the proof is going to be in the pudding. It, it comes down to, you know, especially with the New York Yankees, it's about winning games and ultimately winning titles. Yeah, until you lose three in a row the second week of April and they're screaming at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen at some point. Yeah. I mean, with Herm Edwards now going to Arizona State as – George's Alexander knocks down a three ball there. How much do you think what we do here with the headsets on, does it prepare you in any way for your new roles? I'm, I'm hopeful that it does, and I think in some ways, absolutely. Look, I've been watching the game that I love so closely for the last eight years, and, and I feel like looking at things through a manager's lens and, and, and I think all the preparation you have and all the – you know, sort of training within the media now. Hopefully these are skills that will put me in a position to succeed. And speaking of Herm, I reached out to him. Herm hasn't got back to me yet, but I reached out to him today to congratulate him and to let him know, you know, he's going to Arizona, so I might have a house for him if he needs one. So Herm, I got a house for you if you need one in Arizona. <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> Under five minutes to go in the half. Monmouth and Kentucky. It's been all Wildcats as expected. We're pleased to be joined by Aaron Boone, the new manager of the New York Yankees, taking in this basketball game here this afternoon. Have you gotten your holiday shopping done yet? <laughs> no. No. No, we're uh, <laughs> all right. long way to go. I've been a little bit busy. So. Well, you were busy back in 03. Put your analyst hat back on. <laughs> what were you thinking at the point where you knew off the bat that's out? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was fair. And once I knew that, uh, that turned into a, a, a pretty good night for us. <laughs> a pretty good night for us. You picked up a, a middle name as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, a lot of people like to... Uh, a lot of people still with ESPN are behind the scenes like to uh, refer to me in that manner. It is based in New England. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, some of the, the, the greatest words in the English language are pitchers and catchers are reporting for spring training. How excited are you to get down to Tampa? I am. You know, right now just, you know, trying to kind of forge relationships, get to know guys on the team and, and kind of so when we get down there in early, middle of February, you know, we're able to be – a little ahead of the curve from already ha starting to have that relationship so that you know we can really hit the ground running in spring training and and you know prepare in the way we want to prepare so that we're ready to go when that bell rings on opening day and you've never managed a pitching staff before but you have somebody who can you can really lean on uh you know when i went through the interview process one of the things that was told to me was that Larry Rothschild was going to be back. And I, I, I've known Larry for a long time. I have so much respect for him. He's been one of the great pitching coaches in our sport for a long time now. So I'm going to lean on him and, and really count on him for his expertise, especially when it comes to, to our pitching staff. Another Kentucky block shot. Here come the Wildcats again. Where are you going to spend the holiday, Aaron? Ooh. That was big boy three there. That was, few, that was behind the big arc, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> it was. Largest, largest lead of the afternoon. Yeah. Um, we, go, we go down to the winter meetings tomorrow in Orlando, and that's four days. And then I'm going to spend a few days trying to meet and meet with some, some guys. On, uh, Okay, I'm going to meet with some guys uh, in person, hopefully through the end of next weekend, and then I'll go back to Arizona and, and be there through, uh, through the holidays and Christmas and New Year's. Well, it's all gone bad here for Monmouth. Yes. 11 straight points scored by Kentucky. Yeah, Cashman's going to want me to stay here with Kentucky on this <laughs> run right now. Well, our producer in the truck, Ian Gruco, has just said that you're going to take us to break with the rollout. Are you ready? <laughs> I guess so. All right, last time as an analyst. Go. A little call for the ball. A little step into it. Foot on the NBA three-point line, but he knocks it down for three at the college level. <laughs>
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Taco Bell. Try the tasty rolled chicken tacos back for a limited time. And Cabela's. Get to Cabela's for all of your hunting, fishing, and camping needs. Cabela's. It's in your nature. They say we could get four to six inches of snow in the metropolitan area today. It started snowing this morning yes. here uh, around Madison Square Garden, but I'm telling you, in our two-block walk from the hotel to the garden this morning, I'm telling you, I saw at least 100 Santa Clauses in a block and a half. <laughs> like, something's going on here. Well, some of them on the side streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's SantaCon, and the funny thing was, they all seemed to have a beverage in their hand, and none of them were drinking eggnog. You don't think it was eggnog? I don't think so. Not even spiked eggnog? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> having a little fun in the holiday season here in New York City. Kentucky certainly having fun, and uh, Monmouth not so much. While we were chatting with the new Yankees manager, Aaron Boone, Kentucky rattled off 11 straight points. And Monmouth continues to struggle on offense other than Micah Seaborn. He is 4 for 7. The rest of the Hawks are 3 for 20 combined. Yeah, the length and athleticism of this Kentucky Wildcat team has really impacted this game from the very tip. The first two shots that Monmouth had were both blocked at the rim. And then you get guys coming off the bench like Gilgis Alexander, who's off to a really good start with eight points. He's a stat sheet stuffer. This is a very good, deep Kentucky Wildcat team. That young man is Sam Abizabe, a sophomore from Simsbury, Connecticut, whose minutes have come and gone this year, getting an opportunity down big. And uh, he's a young man who says his dream is to travel around the world and be an instrument for peace wherever I'm needed. How about that for number 44 in gray? Uh, that's awesome. As, uh, as you know, has aspirations of being a world leader. It's what it's all about. And he actually runs the leader of an international panel board on campus. So this kid is really involved at Monmouth. He's originally from Nigeria, but as mentioned, lived in Connecticut during his high school years. He says uh, he is, quote, blessed by the American way of life. And we could certainly all learn a lesson from him and his attitude and outlook. Amen to all of that. He had his best game to date as a sophomore last month at Virginia. Scored eight points coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. This is Pierre Saar. Started the first three games of the year for Monmouth, but uh, has had a couple of DNPs lately, but getting an opportunity here with the Hawks searching for answers. What a, what a great opportunity for Saar to be able to get in the game against one of the elite programs in the entire country in the best venue in the world. Mm -hmm. Talk about a memory. Saar and Abiza Bayer. Good, good friends. They're sharing this experience. Sarah misfires. Sar misfires, excuse me, on the second. George Pappas has also come into the game from Monmouth. He's another one of the freshmen. P.J. Washington with a chance for three. P.J. Washington is a low to handle on the low box. 6'7", 236 pounds. And the thing that I love about him that you have to kind of coax big men into doing is staying low. He does a tremendous job of staying low, which gives him power and a burst to get into that jump hook of his. And he remains perfect both from the floor and from the free throw line. You say, Fonz, he's a load, but you know, he has dropped over 10 pounds since the start of the season. Yeah. And you can probably remember what it was like when you made that transition from high school to Notre Dame that you realize once you're there, my goodness, this is a whole different game, and that's what P.J. has done and has lost that weight and is certainly better for it. Yeah, P.J. been an undersized power forward knowing uh, he wants to play in the league. He's got to make himself a bit more limber. He's able to knock off those 10 pounds. But the thing that John Calipari does so well with preparing his kids for the next level is allowing them opportunities to play outside of even their strength. I go back to Julius Randle when Julius Randle played for the Wildcats. I called one of their games in Lexington and I went to Cal afterwards. I was like, Cal, why don't you just put him in the post because there's no one in the country that can guard him. Oh my goodness. Talk about very nice. few people can guard him. Nice post up. <laughs> PJ's the same way, but he went on to say, Fonz, yeah, that would help me because nobody could guard him in the low post. But for Julius, 
he needs to be able to play out on the floor. Cal allowed him those opportunities to be able to do that in Lexington. And what does he do for the Lakers? Catches that basketball out usually in the wing area, NBA three-point line, and taking guys off the dribble with a little spin move, getting to the rim. Yeah, we're kind of seeing the same evaluation of P.J. Washington, who is playing right now the middle of his own defense, but on offense, he is asked to play the perimeter in yeah. spite of the fact that we saw he can post up pretty well. Yes. Today we'll have a trifecta of events for Yanni SPN. First at 4 Eastern, it's the MLS Cup as uh, Toronto FC takes on the Seattle Sounders. Then at 8 o'clock, the Heisman Trophy presentation. And then finally at 9 o'clock, top-ranked boxing. Lomachenko, Rigando, battle for the WBO Junior Lightweight title. Everything on ESPN and the ESPN app. I have to admit, I'm rooting for uh, Baker Mayfield in that one. Are you? Yeah, Bob, really? Yeah, I used to own a little smoothie shop, so when Bob Stoops used to come through South Bend to play a game, he used to buy several smoothies from us, so he's bought a little loyalty for me. I'm, I'm <laughs> going funny. Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> I never in a million years would have guessed that's why you're rooting for the Oklahoma quarterback. Absolutely. Well, it certainly seems like, from what all the uh, folks who know better than we do, that he is going to win the award later tonight right here in New York City. Pierre Saar with the triple. That's four points for the junior from Senegal. Let's see if Kentucky gets this basketball in the hands of Kevin Knox here for the final offensive possession of the half. They seem to be trying to find him on the post. Now we've got under 10 seconds to get it there. Gilgis Alexander will go to the free throw line. Yeah, I, I love Gilgis Alexander. I think he is one of the more underrated players on this Kentucky team. People not really understanding fully the value that he brings. This kid, he's going to get you 8, 10, 12 points a game. He's going to get you some assists. He's going to get on the glass. He's going get to the, get on the floor. He and Quade Green share the responsibilities at the point guard position. And given his size at 6'6", 180, he's going to be a monster as we get to the later part of this year. And, you know, Gilgis Alexander, started the opener of the season, but he's come off the bench the last eight games. But the reality is he has played more minutes this year than Quade Green. So they truly are sharing it. And, and it's been the one position that people have asked the most about this year for the Wildcats. Mm -hmm. Only three seconds to go in the half. Sar didn't seem to recognize. And so Monmouth doesn't get off a shot. All Kentucky through the first 20 minutes. Here in the City Hoops Classic. The total length and athleticism of this Kentucky Wildcat team has hurt Monmouth early, challenging every single shot from the perimeter and even in the middle. And Jill is with Coach Cal. Coach Calipari, you stress that this week that you have had to have more practice breaking down offenses was what was going to help this team today. What are you liking from your offense so far? I just want to keep seeing lane touches that willing passers are throwing balls. You don't, I'm going to make this the hardest pass ever because it got to look good. No, be a willing passer, drive to get somebody a shot. We started the game a little shaky. Foul trouble caused us to go in a zone, and we look pretty good in it, by the way. But, uh, um, you know, I'm so happy. You know, P.J. PJ Washington, people have been looking like P.J. This, P, he's lost 15 pounds in the last 17 days. And you're seeing now what he'll become. And by the end of the year, he will be one of the best players. Coach, thanks. Thanks. Doug. Well, the numbers back it up. Washington, a perfect four for four from the floor, seven for seven from the line, 16 points. 54-31 Kentucky will take you to the ESPNU Halftime Report right after these messages. York City, we are at the half of our City Hoops Classic with Kentucky on top, 54-31 over Monmouth. Some of the storylines in the SEC. Well, the Florida Gators got off to as good a start to the season as you could imagine. Looked like world beaters at the PK-80, but really the wheels have fallen off, Fonz. Yeah, part of that is teams have figured out how to play them. That's a team that likes to get out in transition and shoot a lot of threes. They were knocking down about 42% of their threes early on. Lately, it's been around 20%. Texas A&M, man, I, I know they lost that game to, to Arizona, but they have one of the elite front lines in all the country, led by Tyler Davis. 
and we've already seen what this Kentucky Wildcat team can be. Let's take a look at their upcoming schedule. This team is really going to be tested with the likes of, folks, don't look past Virginia Tech now. Nope. The fighting Buzz Williams is those short dudes can really get after and knock down a lot of threes. Uh, versus UCLA, Louisville will be obviously always a great rivalry game. And Yante Maton of Georgia, Georgia, of Georgia is going to test them mightily. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this from the Garden. The City Hoops Classic from Madison Square Garden. So far, all Kentucky, the eighth-ranked Wildcats, making big nation happy with a big lead over Monmouth. With Lafonso Ellis, I'm Doug Sherman. And the freshman class for Kentucky, by and large, has done what we expected from them. Yeah, they've been terrific. The best player, Kevin Knox, really struggled early. Only 0-3, oh, only actually, from the field. Five turnovers, but the other freshmen have stepped up and been huge. Gilgis Alexander with 10 in the first half. Hamadou Giallo with 8. Quadi Green with nine, and the monster in the middle has been P.J. Washington, 16 points in the first half, and that's exactly the balance that you want to have. When your best player's not playing well, other guys need to step up, and they certainly did for the Wildcats. Well, Fonz, let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Zales. Kentucky, as expected, with a big advantage on the glass. Micah Seaborn, offensively, the only Hawk who's gotten anything going. Yeah, think about where they got him. We talked about earlier because of the length and athleticism of Kentucky. Monmouth need to get some easy in transition. All of his points came out of transition with the exception of that little runner off the glass. If they want to get back in this game, Monmouth, they're going to have to take advantage of missed shots and turnovers and get out and score in transition. And I'm guessing those 11 turnovers committed by the Wildcats were uh, addressed at halftime by mm -hmm. Coach Cow. Monmouth with the basketball starting the second half and they get a bucket from Mustafa Treor at 6'8", 210, the redshirt sophomore from Philadelphia. Gets the Hawks off to a good start. Diallo is fouled by Zach Tillman who gets the start here in the second half. On the offensive end for Monmouth, I love what King Rice decided to do. Austin Tillman is six feet tall, but 230 pounds. So want to take advantage of him down in the post with Quade Green. And they brought the double team and he was able to find one of his bigs underneath. That's a really good play call coming out of the halftime for King Rice. Yeah, you describe uh, the dimensions of Austin Tillman, and you won't be surprised that he was offered Division I football scholarships. He was a real good running back back in high school out of Wilmington, Delaware, Villanova, Coastal Carolina. They wow. wanted him to run the football. Wow. Can you imagine that guy running at you? I would move. Yes. I would say ole. It's like I play defense on the basketball court. <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> I got your back, though. Too much to be lost. I know you big guys are ready to help us little guys. Tillman, Treor, Sal Nave. The other Tillman, it's Austin Tillman and Zach Tillman. Different spellings, not related. That's Zach Tillman who missed the shot. Back defensively as Hamadou Diallo puts up the three. He's got it. Now, he's not a great three-point shooter. That's not really his game. But yesterday, I watched him lock, knock down about nine in a row. And Coach Cal wants him to take those open jump shots. He looked very confident on that one. Well, Kentucky is now 6 of 10 from the three-point line. And they have not taken or made nearly as many three-point shots as some would expect them to this mm -hmm. year. But that's part of the offense that Coach Cal continues to work on. I love when Kentucky is pushing the pace because with the speed and athleticism that they have, they can get out and you draw two. Now you leave Amadou <laughs> Jallo wide open and he looked pretty comfortable on that three. Well, he matched his career high last time out against Harvard with 19. Diallo well on his way to a new career high with 13 points. That's his season average. Here is Diallo, lost the dribble. Another bad pass. Still loose. Who wants it? It's Kentucky. Who gives it right back? Washington turns it back to the Hawks. On the move. Sal Nave, no. This is Micah Seaborn, first team all-conference in the Metro Atlantic Athletic. Zach Tillman misses the jump hook, Kentucky with it. You can see the link has continued to bother the Monmouth Bigs when they catch that basketball on the interior. Green off the crossover, puts up an air ball. 
leaking out. Sal Nave able to lay it in. Sherman, that's those transition baskets that we've been talking about all afternoon long. Monmouth's got to continue to push the pace on turnovers and missed shots. Knox front rimmed it, long rebound comes to Green, and he was whacked in the side of the head by Austin Tillman. Well, we talked about. Uh, Let's see if we can see what happened here. Oh, yeah, got raked across the face. Both players going after the basketball there. Yeah, it looks like Bade is going to try and stay in the ball game as he gets a hug from Hamadou Diallo. Freshman out of Newman Goretti High School in Philadelphia now heads to the bench. Well, we talked about Coach Cal and his want for his team to take a few more three-pointers. Of course, we want to do them in rhythm and open shots, but it is part of what college basketball is now. You can't be an elite team without shooting your fair share of three. Well, especially because you run into those teams that's, that are going to play your zone. They're not going to allow you to use your athleticism and speed to get in the painted area. You've got to be able to knock down shots. That's not been their strength, but they've shot them really well before that. Before that miss there, they were 6 of 10 from 3 on the afternoon. Well, after the Diallo miss, Knox misses, and they've gone cold. Yeah, Knox is not shooting the basketball confidently today. When I saw him yesterday, he was shooting that thing with confidence, nice aim in the basketball. I think he's got to get him a layup to get himself going. Diego Quinn with a chance for 3. I'll tell you what, that's something that the Monmouth Hawks have been and they continue to be. They're not going to give up. They're going to continue to fight, be tough, be gritty. And they've come out this second half with a lot of energy. Well, Monmouth was picked to finish third in the preseason poll in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference as you see Quade Green heading back to the locker room. The preseason pick is Iona. And that's a, a school that's not far from here in New Rochelle, New York, just outside of New York City. And then pick number two is Manhattan College, which actually is not in Manhattan. They're right. in the Bronx. Right. And then this Monmouth team, which has won the last two regular season titles in the MAC, is picked to finish third. And, you know, it's hard to really say when you've got so much turnover, just like at Kentucky, what truly to expect. Offensive foul going to go against Ty Winyard, trying to post up. Well, what's happening is uh, for Monmouth, you knew coming in that they were going to get good guard play, but you didn't know what they were going to get across their front line. And... That's going to be the biggest key. Can this front line of Monmouth continue to develop, continue to give them the interior post presence that they need on the offensive end, and then on the defensive end, can they have an anchor at the rim? If they continue to evolve and emerge, this Monmouth team may end up winning the regular season championship yet again. Although the reality is they learned the last two years by going to the NIT because they didn't win the MAC tournament title. It's all about that Monday early in March and winning the title game. Last year they didn't even make it past the MAC semifinals. Yet in the process still had a memorable season in West Long Branch, New Jersey. Third foul on Ray Salnave, redshirt freshman from Long Island who played his high school basketball at Cordozo. Kentucky with another turnover. That is 14 fonts. And the Hawks give it right back. Yeah, that's that's been an issue here for the Kentucky Wildcats. Not taking care of the basketball. When I talked to John Calipari yesterday, he's he feels that because of the youth and inexperience, oftentimes they turn it over even when there's no pressure there. So that's an area of growth for this Kentucky team. Kentucky at 7-1 has lost just the one time to Kansas in the Champions Classic. How about the move by Diallo? The ability to change direction and change speeds. I love the way Hamadou Diallo is playing today. Not just relying on that jump shot, but using his elite ball skills and athleticism to get in that lane. Well, we are in New York City. Yeah, stand in New York, baby! The Santas are out. The snow is out, and we have outside Jill Montgomery. She's got a weather forecast and how it relates to the Wildcats. 
Doug, I'm not sure how I got talked into coming out here. <laughs> the island of Manhattan is being blanketed with snow as we enjoy the warmth indoors. 61-38, Kentucky with a huge lead over Monmouth early second half. And while Fonz and I are inside enjoying the warmth and dry weather. Let's go outside. We've got Jill Montgomery braving the elements, Jill. Doug, I'm not sure how I rank as a sideline reporter, but obviously not well that you guys get to stay inside. Winter has officially hit New York City, and you have to be mentally tough to live here. Even Santa Claus behind my back, all of them in for SantaCon this weekend, have to be mentally tough, and that's one of the things Coach Calipari talked about his players with us about not quitting in that second half mentality. He said because they are so inexperienced they get fatigued so they quit they don't think they're fatigued he said then why did you quit well I just felt like it so he is really working on that mental toughness I I like to point out first of all Jill that Fonz allowed you to wear his jacket outside I know that's very nice <laughs> I'm so glad that I brought it it's unbelievably it's coming down out here <laughs> I'm, I'm into the camouflage thing you know <laughs> especially with the fur on the hat there <laughs> Any hot chocolate out there, Jill? Yeah, can you bring me down some fonts, please? <laughs> we appreciate you braving the elements. Would you like to stay out there for the entire second half? Actually, I'm getting cold. I'm coming back inside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. You know, they asked us to go out, and, and Fonz said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> and I got to stay with Fonz. Any pictures with Santa? So clearly, I'm the mentally tough one on this crew. Oh, there's no, no question. question. No question. <laughs> I think that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jill. Please come back inside and join right us. Now. I'm All right. right now. All right. And Fonz needs his co-fan. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't have that assignment. Uh, yes. Although, I will admit, if there was significant snowfall out there, it would be cool to go throw some snowballs out there at you, buddy. Oh. I'm just saying. I'll take my chances. Basketball <laughs> court, all you. Snowball fight, I'll take my chances. Uh, I'm just saying. I grew up in Syracuse, you know. We had a lot of opportunity. <laughs> I lived in Minneapolis for seven years. You did. <laughs> nice little screen and roll. Diego Quinn missed the bunny. Got to finish those at point blank range. Diallo had it knocked away, and he was fouled. Well, not that coaching is really going to play into the uh, the outcome of this one between John Calipari and King Rice, but uh, King told me a, a story last year that I really found fascinating. He was a first-year head coach seven years ago, Fonz. He opened his college coaching career by getting blown out by Villanova, coached by Jay Wright, Virginia Tech, Seth Greenberg, and George Mason, Paul Hewitt. So they get to the fourth game of that season and it's against Albany. It's, like, I, it's Will Brown as that coach. I got Will Brown. I finally got somebody I can handle. Now King Rice readily admits that he got his rear end coached off by Will Brown that game. You Albany wound up blowing out Monmouth that day and King Rice didn't pick up his first win as a head coach until game nine. And it was really a humbling experience for him that he has learned not to overlook any opponent regardless. Absolutely and I think that experience not only has developed his toughness and grittiness on the sideline, but I think that toughness and grittiness has really transferred over to his players and been a mark of this Monmouth Hawk program for the last three years. And we've seen that with the success that they've had. Two back-to-back -back MAC championships in the regular season. He's a young man who grew up in upstate New York in Binghamton and was recruited by Dean Smith to play at North Carolina. Hawks turn it over back to the Wildcats. King also has marvelous stories, as you might remember, of his time in Chapel Hill. And just what it was like to have Coach Smith walk into your high school gymnasium and say, I want you. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I would have said I'm coming. <laughs> and he did. He looks fantastic. He almost looks like he did when he was in college, but I liked him better with the high top fade. Absolutely. Remember? Back in the late 80s, mm -hmm. that was the thing. <laughs> it's back in style, by the way. Is it? Mm-hmm. When are you going to throw yours back? Oh, I, I, it's, it's, it's over for me. Man. <laughs> Too much of a hole in the top middle. You rocked it for a long time, though, and did very well. <laughs> yeah, look at Shea Gale, just Alexander. He's not thinking about uh, when I'm losing my hair. He's got more than enough. I know. I have hair in me even right now. I had locks like that. You did for a long, like long time. Yeah. What's the toughest part about having hair like that? Mm. Well, he, he, he's done his the, the right way. It's just keeping it out of your face. Yeah. <laughs> it's so forces you to wear a headband. 
We touched upon it in the first half about Shea Gilgis Alexander, who has played more minutes than Quade Green. The reality is he's coming off the bench now, and, and it does matter to players whether you're starting or off the bench, doesn't it? And, and he seems to ex have accepted whatever role he's been given by Coach Cap. Yeah, he, he's just a player. You just plug him in and he plays. He guards, he scores for you, he rebounds. He's an invaluable piece to this Kentucky Wildcat machine. Seaborn blocked by Gabriel. But there he is now, rebounding. As, as the season goes on, Fonz, do you see one or the other point guard becoming the guy for Kentucky? Do you need for one of them to become the guy? I don't think so. And the reason, you want to be able to give teams different looks. And I always liked my point guard, my second guard coming off the bench to be kind of a pusher, a go-go guy. And Quaddy Green earlier, Quaddy Green earlier was hanging on to the basketball a little too long. Coach Calipari wants him to score the rock, and he wasn't scoring as much. And so Cal wanted him to give that basketball up early so he could get it back later in the clock. And so he's going to be the guy who's scoring the most points, I think, at that position. But then you want to change your speed, change his direction, different look guy coming off the bench. And Gilgis Alexander is that guy. Well, it looks like for the foreseeable future, Friday Green will not be back in. You see that right eye is closed up from after taking the shot to the face a few minutes ago as we take another look at how he was injured. Finger to the eye. And it was Austin Tillman who got him. And so based on the way his eye looks, you would think that uh, it'll be the Shea Gilgis Alexander show for the next 12 yes. and a half minutes. Very difficult to play this game with one eye. Well, we haven't heard from Micah Seaborn in a while. Nice looking stroke from the corner by Dion Hammond, the freshman from Mitchellville, Maryland with eight. King Rice is really excited about his future. He feels like he's the best freshman that he has out there. He's got a quick release on that J. 17 points was the leading score against Seton Hall. Washington, after a rare miss, takes it to the bucket. He continues to lead all scorers. I found it interesting that King Rice says that this current freshman class at Monmouth is the best freshman class he's ever had, but at the same time, the crew that just graduated that uh, took the Hawks to heights they'd never been to before is a group of guys that King Rice thanks every day for putting him in the position where he is and, and having taken care of his children's future based on the wonderful contract extensions he continues to get. Yeah, and that's the humility that we've talked about so far with King Rice is recognizing that you know, for a coach to have success, the players have to get it done on the floor. And his players have done that and got him a five-year extension. And so he has a tremendous level of gratitude for what that group did for him. Malik Martin lost it on the drive. Kentucky up big with over 11 on the clock. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. And Dr. Scholl. Boone, who joined us in the first half, the new manager of the New York Yankees, and then Brian Cashman, the busiest man in the building, perhaps, along with LaFonso Ellis. And there is Chris <laughs> Carter, former colleague at ESPN, great wide receiver during his day. Mm -hmm. I got to figure that uh, between Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone, their phones have been blowing up all day today with all the reports swirling around that the Yankees and the Marlins yes. have reached terms on an agreement to have Giancarlo Stanton put on the pinstripes. When we had Aaron join us in the first half, he would neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. Well, Derek Jeter, the uh, legendary Yankee, of course, is now the man in charge down in Miami, mm -hmm. and so they are taking a different tact. And it appears that Mr. Jeter and company have made a deal that will put John Carlos Stanton in the same lineup as Aaron Judge. So what's that? Six seven six eight. 275 each. Yes. The two guys who combined for over 100 home runs last year. Woo. Hitting somewhere in the middle of that Yankee lineup. I think some bullpens are a little nervous. Yeah. Right now with those two guys. Well, you asked uh, Aaron Boone about it. 
as we have seen in all sports, the size of the athlete just continue to grow and grow and grow. I mean, back in the 60s, you had a guy like Frank Howard was the big slugger for the Washington sure. Senators. And over time, you've had big guys. But now in baseball and in basketball, you, you know, with Kentucky, we talk about the length. You've got guys who are 6'9", 6'10", with guard skills, and they permeate college basketball now. Yes, indeed. And, and it's interesting because I would, I, because of the one-and-done rule, so to speak, uh, I was interested to see how much of them or how many of them would actually stay around. And a lot of those are being plucked every single year by the NBA. And so if you can have them for one year, you have a decisive advantage. Another deflection by the Monmouth defense. It leads to a foul that goes against the Hawks and against Ray Nave. That's his fourth. Sherman, the reason I like the length is on the defensive end because you can practically block out the sun. You've got larger <laughs> guards out there because they distort passing angles with their length and their size. And then if you're fortunate enough to get down in the lane, as we've seen so far, especially in that first half with Kentucky, Nick Richards, man, those long arms of his, 6'11", 7'4", wingspan, 9'1", standing reach. Those guys just go get it. So they're able to erase a lot of mistakes that you make out on the perimeter. And when you were coming up in East St. Louis? Mm -hmm. Illinois. Illinois. Mm -hmm. You were 6'7", 6'8". Nobody was asking you to go face the basket, right? It just wasn't considered. You're big, go down and on the block. I was a back-to-the-basket yeah. guy who could make a 15, 18-foot jump shot even when I went into the NBA. And now uh, that would actually be frowned upon to a degree. Yeah. Well, the folks who made the uh, hour-long trip up from the Jersey Shore with a little something to cheer about, their uh, good-looking freshman, Dion Hammond, now with 11 points. And over 2,000 fans, I'm told, have made the trip to root for Monmouth. They draw real well on their in their on-campus arena. Here comes Hammond again. I like him. I like him to be able to come out here as a freshman, taking on one of the <laughs> one of the elite programs in all of college basketball. He has not flinched. Down in the block, a friendly rim for Nick Richards. I know certain members of the Monmouth Travel Party who came up to New York early yesterday had an opportunity to go and tour the WFAN Sports Radio studios and meet some of the personalities. By the way, uh, John Calipari's son, Brad Calipari, is coming to the ball game for Kentucky. Abiza Bay with the layup. He's got six, two off his career high. I like the patience that Monmouth is showing against that zone. Micah Seaborn able to see along that baseline, an area that we talked about, free throw line area, short corners along the baseline, a wide open against the 2-3 zone. In the post, they go to Washington, who has been so efficient today. Can't be more efficient than Nick Richards on the throwdown. Did you see where his head was over the rim? Diallo. That's how quickly they can do it. Third time in his young career, Hamadou Diallo, the youngster from Queens, New York, has scored 19 points. Micah Seaborn. His first points here in the second half, that's 14 total. Well, Kentucky, these students will start finals on Monday as Brad Calipari misses his first shot attempt. That's why the crowd was going nuts. Surprised by that Miss J. He's really been working on that. There's that former running back busting through the offensive line to lay it in for two. Four points for Austin Tillman, senior from Wilmington, Delaware. Looks like he's going through some creases in his pass, huh? Yep. <laughs> you can hear the fans going, Absolutely. come on, Brad, shoot.
Six and a half minutes to go. Seaborn forces it and draws the foul. And folks, this is Kentucky basketball. When you're creating offense off your defense, P.J. Washington exploding on that block shot. Hamadou Diallo showing a little pull up there from the free throw line. The freshman getting it done as Winyard Gabriel, the older guy, enjoying their work. Holiday Hoops are back, and we will have a great matchup next Sunday afternoon on ESPN. It's 11th ranked North Carolina taking on number 24 Tennessee. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, there are only a handful of unbeaten teams remaining as we get into the second week of December. One of those is top ranked Duke, who actually in Chestnut Hill this afternoon over on ESPN is being pushed. The Blue Devils were trailing double figures early in the second half. Final five minutes right now, Duke up three. Now I check a, a refresh. Actually, BC has retaken the lead 75-74. But what do you think about that top ten? Start with Duke, Fonz. What do you think of their chances going forward? Are they the prohibitive favorite? I think they have all the pieces to be exactly that. You have great guard play. They have good bigs on the interior. Marvin Bagley, I don't know if there's a big in America playing as well as he is. I mean, he is absolutely so good. Uh, and I think this team, I don't think they're as good as they're going to be. Because defensively, you can still take them off the dribble. They are exposed at times on the offensive glass. But make no mistake about it, Duke's going to be there in the, in the end. First made field goal of the day for Kevin Knox. The freshman from Tampa makes our score 81-57. And Marvin Bagley, oh, by the way, has himself another double-double today. <laughs> 15 and 12 at last check, which actually is kind of holding him in check, relatively speaking. Absolutely. And when we looked, uh, you know, with Duke at that time, 3 of 12 from the three-point line, one of the things we, that you asked me is, how did Grayson Allen shoot it? He was 0 for 4 from 3. But if Grayson Allen can continues, continue to provide them efficient bombing from the three-point line, now you got that inside-outside balance. That's a, and that's a Duke team. Not quite the length of this Kentucky team, but they're long and athletic as well. Triple penetration here. Drew and Knox is ready with his hands ready to shoot that rock. And, man, I love the way he plays the game. Hasn't been as successful today, but we talk about a Trey Young, 40 points on the season recently, 31 last night against USC, maybe the best point guard in the nation. Colin Sexton, 40 points in the game that they only had three guys when they were playing against Minnesota. And Marvin Bagley, we've already talked about. And if you've not seen him, folks, you got to take a look at DeAndre Ayton of Arizona. 6-7-1, about 255 pounds. He's an absolute monster on the low post and can step out and shoot a three as well. Now, I was privileged to be at uh, the PK-80 a couple of weeks ago and have the Oklahoma-Oregon game when Trey Young went for 43 points. Wenyon Gabriel. You and I were talking about Trey Young before the game, Fonz. Tell our audience what you thought about in terms of a comp for the young man who leads the country in scoring and is number three in the country in assists per game. Yeah, it, it's absolutely amazing to see what he does. And he reminds me of, now he's not Kyrie Irving, but he reminds me of Kyrie Irving because there's not many guards in college basketball who can change speeds, change directions, three or four different times in the possession. And that's what allows him to be able to get into the lane. And he's got all the finishes around the rim. He's got the floater. He could finish with his left and right hand around the rim. But as soon as he sees someone coming, a secondary defender, he wastes no time. He delivers that basketball on the hands. We saw it time and time again last night. Uh, hooking up Christian James, who was knocking down several threes last night. He, he's the most entertaining player I've seen in college basketball in a while. Yeah, Trey Young, great story in this young college basketball season. Stays home in Norman, Oklahoma to star for the Sooners, and he has more than exceeded the hype. Hamadou Diallo, by the way, with that bucket, has himself a new career high with 21 points to lead Kentucky. It's been so good. Not forcing the action, just letting the game come to him. Not just relying on the J, but mixing J's and drives. He's been impressive this afternoon. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Knox was the last to touch. Although I tell you what, after the game, it's all Kentucky. Hamadou's had a great game. I'm guessing he's going to be thinking most about the missed dunk on his first opportunity. <laughs> I certainly would. Man, he 
is one of the prime athletes in all of college basketball. Gilgis Alexander pokes it away from Tillman. And here comes the freshman point guard. He lost it out of bounds. Yet another Wildcats turnover. Give him 18 and count it. Mm. Well, Chairman, I don't think we should underestimate the value that Winyan Grayberrill has brought to this game. Two, last two, three games, he's been trying to do a little too much, you know, turn the basketball over, etc. And Coach Kyle went to him and was like, listen, what makes you special is your energy. We need you to bring your energy and your effort and all that other stuff will come. And he shot the three today with a high level of confidence. He's getting out in transition. He's been that energy guy that Coach Kyle was looking for which allows him to be successful out there on the floor. And that experience, again, come February and March, is going to be huge. Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, the Wildcats flew up from the expectation. Every year, he's got to retool. He's got to teach all the basics. He's got to take 17 and 18-year-old kids and teach them how to play for one another, how to maximize their talent. and. I don't think there's anybody in the business who's done it as well as he has. No, and uh, among the big names, the big headline, bold face names during this great run at Kentucky, of course, you start with A.D. Anthony Davis, now of the New Orleans Pelicans, as Hammond buries the shot. And uh, A.D., of course, led Kentucky to the national championship. Carl Anthony Towns as well. I mean, uh, it's a pretty good list that he's got going there, and, and it's a real family, and you really feel that when you're at Kentucky. On opening day rosters, 27 former Wildcats on opening day rosters in the NBA. How about that? Just absolutely incredible. I always said that if I had the privilege of being a coach and coaching that level of talent, I've always thought that there was a, a nice happy medium between winning and putting my kids in position that they could actually be successful for their future. And again, no one's done it better than Cal. No, there's no question that high school players around the country understand that, and uh, it's become a two-team recruiting race for all of the top recruits. It's either Kentucky or Duke, and yeah. it seems like everybody in the top 15, 20 on the ESPN 100 every year just waiting for yeah. either Kay or Cal to make that call. Yeah, as good as Coach K has been, it's been Coach Cal who really had established the model for the one and dones, if you will. And uh, I take my hat off to him because you can tell he genuinely loves his kids and wants to push his kids beyond what they think they can do and has allowed them to be very successful. My favorite, De'Aaron Fox. I can see why. Diallo. Boy, when he takes off the floor, you don't know what's going to happen. It, it must be nice to just take off and decide what you're going to do while you're in the air. <laughs> what a luxury. Have a bite to eat, yes. get a drink. I know. Take it in Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Jill, you've got more on Coach Cal. I do, Doug. All of those one and dones that you guys just mentioned is exactly what Coach Calipari has been playing, has been preparing rather these players for. He said they don't know their level of talent yet. He said in order for them to be successful right now, they have to accept where they are right now. There's teams that are above them. There's players that have been above them in the past. He said everybody that plays against us has house money. He said they have nothing to lose. We have everything to lose. So he said they've got to step up to that mentality of being those superstar players. I find it interesting, and as uh, as Coach Cal was explaining that to us, he said, once you get to the NCAA tournament, then the other side has something to lose, but it's always on us. And, and we like that. We relish that, but it, it's just what Kentucky basketball is. Yeah, and to both of your points, I think that's why they've been so successful when they've gotten into the NCAA tournament, because they've had to deal with that kind of pressure all year long. For most people, it would be a problem, but it's a luxury for this Kentucky Wildcat program. And they have certainly reloaded once again with another star-studded recruiting class coming in for next year. Well, there's a good-looking freshman for Monmouth, Dion Hammond. Timeout called with just over a minute remaining. Coach Cal's club well en route to its eighth win of the year. We've got quite a trifecta for you today on ESPN, beginning in a couple of hours, 4 o'clock Eastern, the MLS Cup, Toronto FC versus the Seattle Sounders. Then at 8 o'clock, from here in New York City, the Heisman Trophy presentation, and then finally 9 o'clock, top rank boxing, it's the WBO Junior Lightweight title fight, Lomachenko, Rigando, everything on ESPN 
and the ESPN app. Can I tell you that uh, I was rooting for Baker Mayfield? You did. Okay. You Just did. wanted to remind you. Because his current coach back in the day used to buy products from him. Yeah. Nice. It's not bad, huh? Whatever motivation you, you need, I like it. Well, Dan Pilari has come into the game for Monmouth, and you might remember the man with the basketball now was the head of the Monmouth bench mob two years ago. He picks up an assist on the slam by Abizabeth. That's the way to do it. Come in the game and get yourself on the box score. Those were funny, though, weren't they? I they mean, were. the creativity. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Top notch. Nearly comes up with a steal as well. Number 15 in gray with a smile. Now he's got to get himself into the scoring column. And Kentucky emptying its bench. Dylan Pulliam has come in. Johnny David as well. And you know what, Fonz? Hmm. Upperclassmen for Kentucky have yet to score. Could that change in the final 21 seconds? Well, there's time for everything. All Let's right. see if we can get Calipari a shot here. Pulliam's a redshirt junior. Johnny David's a junior. And instead, they go to the freshman, Nick Richards. Why not? Come on, Gilgis Alexander. You didn't get the text. Oh, no, Polari doesn't care. Nice. He's going to fire away. The senior from Oceanport, New Jersey. Well, it was a rough afternoon at the Garden for Monmouth, but something to smile about despite the big loss. Yeah, too much link, too much athleticism, especially across that front line for Kentucky. Monmouth had a difficult time getting to any of their offense. First two shots of the game were blocked on the interior by Kentucky. That set the tone for this game. Hamadou Diallo with a new career high, 23 points, as Kentucky improves its record to 8-1, winning the City Hoops Classic.